Let's do uh, Tickety Boo News. Here is uh, news from the cheese-eating surrender monkeys in France. Uh, we always love to hear from the French. There is one thing the French know about, and that's sex. If you go to France, those people are the best-looking people you have ever seen. And when you go and watch French movies, I always say, you know, it's not like American actresses aren't beautiful, but the French actresses have a way of being insanely gorgeous, but looking like human beings, like looking like someone you might meet on the street, and yet at the same time, they are gorgeous beyond belief. And one of the most gorgeous of them all was Catherine Deneuve, one of the most beautiful women uh, who has ever walked onto the screen. So just one day after Hollywood offered a show of support for the Me Too movement on the Golden Globe's red carpet and stage, a famous actress on the other side of the Atlantic lent her name to a public letter denouncing the movement, that the Me Too movement, as well as the French counterpart, which is called the Balance Ton Pork, or Expose Your Pig. Catherine Deneuve joined more than 100 other French women in entertainment, publishing, and academic fields Tuesday in the pages of the newspaper Le Monde and on its website in arguing that the two movements in which women and men have used social media as a forum to describe sexual misconduct have gone too far by publicly prosecuting private experiences and have created a totalitarian climate. This is the letter. Rape is a crime. But insistent or clumsy flirting is not a crime, nor is gallantry a chauvinist aggression. As a result of the Weinstein affair, there has been a legitimate realization of the sexual violence women experience, particularly in the workplace where some men abuse their power. It was necessary, but now this liberation of speech has been turned on its head. You know, one of the things that is so funny about this Me Too movement what what most leftist movements are is they're not actually an attempt to make things better. They're an attempt to seize power for a certain number of people. So, for instance, when people call you racist, it doesn't mean that you did anything racist. It means that they are that the left is seizing the right to denounce you. OK, it doesn't mean you did anything racist. They say, well, you said this and that's racist because it could mean this. You know, you think like, well, wait, I, you know, if I'm a racist, I would say people of one race are less than people of another race. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I actually believe that that is a sin. To, to, to uh, approach people like that is a sin. That's why I won't do it on either side. So I'm not a racist. So you're calling me a racist is just essentially a power grab to say that you have the, the ability to define me in that way. And it's a way of shutting people up. If they say, you know what, maybe we should be careful who comes into our country and you say you're a racist. It's just a way of saying shut up. You know, scare, it's a way of scaring you into silence. But the problem with this is when you start talking about sex is most people have sex and most people do sex and most people have done things in their sexual lives, things that they regret and things that they don't regret. And they have very strong opinions about what right and wrong is. And the reason this thing is blowing up in the left's face so that the Hollywood actresses at the Golden Globe parading their black dresses and all this stuff are the same people who hid uh, Harvey Weinstein's crimes for 20 years. They're the same exact people and it's blowing up in their face. The reason is, is that when you start to think about what really is sexual abuse, you have to look at your own life and your own thoughts and your own way of behaving. And that's different than just letting somebody seize the power to call you names. That's what Hollywood is doing. They're playing by that old playbook. We're the ones, we are the left, we are the elite, we are the beautiful people. We decide who's racist. We decide who's sexist. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because with sex, that's part of everybody's life, and we all have a, a very definite opinions. We're going to bring some people, get some guests on to talk more about sexual ethics because I think it's a really complicated, really interesting um, uh, subject, and I think we need to hear a little bit more about it so we can think more clearly about it. That will be coming up tomorrow. Who do we have tomorrow? Um, we're not sure. Oh, oh, yeah, Henry Olson isn't feeling well, but hopefully uh, we'll get Mike Duran and we'll talk about Duran. He wrote a really interesting piece. I'm Andrew Clavin. This is The Andrew Clavin Show. We'll see you tomorrow. The Andrew Clavin Show is produced by Robert Sterling, executive producer Jeremy Boring, senior producer Jonathan Hay. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Edited by Alex Zingaro. Audio is mixed by Mike Cormina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Alvera. And our animations are by Cynthia Angulo and Jacob Jackson. The Andrew Clavin Show is a Daily Wire Forward Publishing production. Copyright Forward Publishing 2017.